Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. In this video tutorial, I am going to explain to you how I created this PowerPoint layout. Now, this standard that I have used is from the Australian and New Zealand electric, electrical standards. And uh, if you are in another country apart from Fiji, this might be a bit different for you. But you can use the basics of this video tutorial to do up your PowerPoint layout and also understand some of the fundamental features of AutoCAD. Now, what I usually like to do is set up an electrical notes table stating the prompts that I'm going to use. Then I also like to place an electrical legend. Now let me just go through this again. This is a single switch uh, light. This is just a single uh, gang light switch. By gang we mean that there is only one switch on and off. Now this is a two gang light switch. That means that this switch has two, two switches. One for one light and the other for the. Similarly this is three and then you have four and five. Over here with the PowerPoint, this is PowerPoint, two PowerPoint and switches and this is one PowerPoint and switch. Now this is the height of the PowerPoint from the finished floor level. That means if I am looking at this floor plan here in my drawings, I will understand that this floor, this PowerPoint is 300 mm above the finished floor level. That's inclusive of the tiles and or any other kind of finishing which you will be putting here as per your previous architectural video. Make sure to check out my other videos as well as it shows how to use AutoCAD and also how to draw a set of architectural drafting plan. Over here I have put my standard down square light. This seems to be in uh, fashion right now. This is my electric meter box. This is the electrical power li wire line. This is the uh, height above the ground again. This is just a repetition on the top. And this is the other light fitting but it's in a round manner. So let's begin. Okay. So, in the last video, I had brought in the floor plan from the architectural side and pasted it over here so that I could do my lighting layout. Now, what I'll basically do is I'll simply delete this floor plan because that's just for an example. Then I'm going to copy this. That's CO for copy. Click anywhere, even you can click outside. Don't have to click on the floor plan all the time and paste it over here. Now basically what I'll do is simply just take out all the lights in the its wirings. As I have done here like so. As these are not the, that well important. Now as you can see that upon one click everything over here is highlighted. And the reason why that is being done is because of the group command. Now if you were to explode this. And just draw them separately and leave them anyhow. You will be having a very hard time. You'll need to go and select each and every wire, then each and every light fitting, then the light and then the text. So basically over here, this eliminates the job of you selecting multiple types. Always remember, work smart, not hard. So as you can see, once I've ungrouped this, I have to go back up and delete all of these again. So it's a complete waste of time. And the more time you waste in an architectural drawing, the more chances you will have of getting blasted at by your boss. So I'll basically just delete each and every item here. Like I said, if you do not group your work, or if you do not group your references, this is what's going to happen. I have only ungrouped this for this video exercise so that you can understand the difference between grouping and non-grouping. However, I always like to group my work no matter what I do. Once you have set it up here, you do not need to go around and draw these light fittings and other things. You can just copy the things from here and incorporate them in your other drawing. Okay, so as I said, let's just copy the PowerPoint and paste them on top. Somewhere out here. Then I'll check my scale as to what scale I'm representing my... Uh, my flow electrical uh, PowerPoint plane. The type PR for properties so that it opens up here. And then you can just anchor it to the right. Properties, is, it's very important to have the properties palette over here so you'll understand each and every item and what you, whatever you have selected. So if it's small like this, because I've installed a new, newer version of AutoCAD, if it's small like this, simply bring your mouse in so that it points to this kind of arrow over here. Then hold it down and just pull it out until you can see all the things there, like so. 
then you can just click on this to leave it open there or it will dock by itself then what you do is you match the these text sizes with the initial floor plan size so the initial floor plan text size is at a scale of 1 is to 82 millimeters so basically what i'll do is i'll just select these two and put them to their correct scale i'll add a scale and then i'll say 1 is to 80 then i'll delete the other unnecessary one 1 is to 100 and there you go now what i'll do is i'll just basically group this and then i'll do the same for the top now one is a single powerpoint with a single powerpoint switch two is two powerpoints with two powerpoint switches and there's one more thing that we need to bring up and that's the height of the fittings you can click on this text and just do what i've done on top change its scale add your scale add the relevant scale that you'll be using and delete the unnecessary ones like so basically once if it becomes small you can just center it so that it looks good and take it down select it there and then group it so <clears throat> basically what i'll do is just copy these and then paste them wherever i feel is right now in a modern house it's always best to put one beside the bedroom i mean one beside the bed master i mean the headboard my apologies to the left and the other one to the right over here so i'm putting two just in case if you need to walk outside here you can plug it into this here and then go outside and walk there so one person can charge their phone here the other one can charge their phone or if you wish to have an electronic feature all over here you can use that one or any other electronics that's important then what i'll do is simply select this type mi for mira and just put it in a desired location like so and then I'll just move it up, adjust it, and then move it right into place. Now, if the other side is the exact mirror of this, what you can do is basically select your PowerPoints and then just select your sorry, fittings and then move them out. Now, each and every PowerPoint will need to have the height indication. So, in this case, I will allow these PowerPoints to be 1.1 meters high from the ground finished floor level or you can put them at a height of your choice. Now, basically, once I'm done here, I will just select all these works that I have done and then type MI for mirror, do M2P for mirror to point, select the two long points like so and mirror it to the other side. So, if you need to make adjustments, you can do that. But these kind, these, these techniques will really help you to move up your work faster. Now, the next thing that I'll do, I usually use put two. I don't like to put one because it's just annoying to have one and then you have to share it with a two-pin adapter anyway. So, basically, I'll just put these guys over here, trying to keep them away from the water source. My apologies. one here i can also put one here but for this case i'll leave it as it is this will do the work because this is a wall mounted electric water heater which i'll be showing you in another video and if the need comes we can also put one over here so let's just put it there for this exercise's sake then rotate this now the cool thing about this group is that basically what you can do is Select whatever you like and then you can change them individually. So in this, say I'll just say it's at a 90 degrees. If that does not work out for you, change its angle until it does. There you go. And then basically just select this, select this and then move this over here. Like so. And if the height fittings are wrong, move them up and move them either left or to right like so so as you can see that within the 10 minutes time you have managed to set up your floor plan the powerpoints layout now basically what i'll do is move up to the living area so i'll select two i will not, i will not be using the one so i'll put one around here there is no need to worry about this text encroaching over this sofa because this text will not be on the site it will only be in the drawings 
So you can make these. Remember, whenever you're drawing something important, only the important things have to be dark and the others have to be turned light. I have set up the color scheme accordingly so that these guys are light and the ones that I'm trying to show is dark. So I don't need to do anything else to it. Refer to video 1, 2 and 3 to understand what I'm talking about. And uh, just for the kicks, I'll put two power points. Now I understand it's a wrong idea to put it under a window, but since my windows are going to be waterproofed and uh, with a proof sealant anyway, so I don't need to worry about much. Basically what I can do is, I'll have to change this over here. This cannot be 1.1 above the ground. So I'll just say it's a half a meter above the ground. So we'll say 500 above the ground. Double click, center, select, select and group. Similarly, delete this, select, copy, see off for copy and put it over there like so. Now what you'll do is basically select this, select this, type MI for mirror, then do M to P, that's mirror to point, select your two points and mirror it out there like so. We'd like to have a PowerPoint for the essentials or anything less. Now here in the kitchen, we will need to be careful. We'll need to put at least two 15 amps switches, I mean 15 amps power points, so that they can handle the microwave, the electric cooktop, and the range hood. So I've allowed for one there. And uh, you can also allow accordingly, but I'll just allow one here. And I also usually, what I do is, this will be 500 mm from the countertop height. So it will be right into the, it will be right at the bottom of the overhead cabinet. Remember, it's from the finished surface. So th this is the finished surface here. You measure up at least another 500 mm in height. Then the bottom of the light, the, the power points uh, fitting will be the 500 mm. So copy this. And then I'll just paste one somewhere around here so that I can do an extension light or something at some time. Copy. <coughs> oh, I'll just mirror this. I'll find one of my center points. If not, then I just do M to P again. And mirror it over here like so. So, if it's an external, you cannot have it right near the ground because it's a wet area. So, what I'll do is I'll put it up to a safer area. So, I'll just ungroup this. Double click on that. Select all. 1, 100. Or let's just make it easy for everybody. 1,200 or 4 feet. And then you can do group. <coughs> Similarly, you can ungroup this or you can select on this, go over here, go to M text, and then look for its contents somewhere. But if you can't find it, just don't waste your time with it. You can just basically ungroup this and you can again put this at a height of 4 feet or 1200 mm. Move it and center it into place so that it's aesthetically appealing. And then you just type group and there you go. With this exercise, you have now completed your PowerPoints layout. <clears throat> that was all for this video. In the next videos, upcoming videos, I will explain to you what are shop drawings and how they are made, what they are made for, and what are the principles for making shop drawings. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like my channel, please do like. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel. And if they, if you have any queries or questions, Please let me know via comments. Thank you.